Hi, and welcome to another demonstration and use case around the ArcSight uh, Logger 6.0 product uh, that we have available. Now, uh, I'm actually going to dig into a little bit more detail around some of the other capabilities that we have within the Logger solution with regards to some uh, additional processing, uh, receiving of file data, uh, log data uh, through the use of files, and also the use of a little uh, additional uh, search command that we can use called a transaction. Now, uh, we actually do have the ability to receive data in a number of different ways uh, and actually uh, we can receive those directly. Uh, we can receive it, uh, for example, a syslog. We, we can receive the data through uh, an ArcSight smart connector. So we're processing and parsing the data and adding additional en enrichment to that. Uh, we could even have uh, onboard processing of, of the data as well. So, for example, as listed here, we've got a number of UDP receivers. It could be TCP if we wanted to be. Uh, in fact, we can even have uh, folders defined where we're receiving the files uh, we could even also have uh, files that are being received from particular locations uh, and actually what we can do these are disabled and I literally can just uh, click the relevant button have it enabled uh, and have that particular process of receiving the log data in this case directly uh, nice and simple what does that mean? What does it look like? So this is all within Logger, so we're not doing any external processing. This is all actually within the, the Logger system itself. Uh, of course, uh, this could be local or remote. In this case, it's just a local uh, folder. So in this case, we're actually just getting it from a particular test location for the data. Uh, we can actually do some wild carding on the file name, so we can make sure we can process additional uh, log files based on uh, some sort of timestamp or indicator on the log file itself. We can even define uh, what we're going to do with regards to uh, the process, what, what is the what is the type, uh, and in fact actually there's a whole list of different types that are pre-built within the system as standard. So we've got standard processing for common event format, but also Cisco logs, uh, Microsoft DHCP, uh, logger, and uh, common ones to do with blue coat proxy and Apache's, uh, Apache log, uh, web server as well. So uh, the great thing is we can actually define our own on top of that, so we can actually go to the source types and add our own and define them. Uh, but in this case, we're actually just going to use that. We need to define some time formats for that. Uh, but once it's done, uh, then we actually just uh, receive that log data and process it accordingly. Uh, like I say, the great thing is that we can actually define additional parsers uh, within this to process the data. As you can see here, we can actually do some of that processing to do some of the field mapping. Uh, it's actually based on some pretty straightforward, simple regex for doing that. Uh, and of course, we can define that as part of a, a standard process that we, we've already defined, for example, using the, uh, the little wizard that uh, has been demonstrated in a previous uh, scenario. So that's all great, but uh, you know, what, are we, what, are we, what can we do here and, and how can we look at some of the, the data that's involved in doing this? Now, uh, if I, I jump to the summary uh, just to see where the, uh, some of my log data is coming from, so we can see uh, where some of this data is coming through, what we call these receivers. And we can see at the bottom this mail logs receiver, which we just enabled a minute ago. We've processed something like 15,000 events through that. So I, I just click on that to actually take me to those logs specifically. So you can actually see here it's looking in uh, and doing a search automatically for the logs that are only received from this receiver. So it's a nice and simple way to eliminate and get down to that kind of data, nice and simple and straightforward. Now, of course, there's a whole set of information here uh, we can display and we're seeing all the information accordingly. Uh, of course actually I can define that down to particular field sets that we're interested in. So actually I'm interested because I know it's, it's, it's email, it's mail data from, from a post fix uh, system. So we can actually uh, just look at that uh, relevant data. Uh, accordingly so we can see the information it's relay uh, it's come from our, our mail log uh, and actually what, what's relevant here is I, I want to dig into some some options here with regards to uh, what we can see here for what we call this QID uh, field here that we've defined and, and we're parsing data from so we can see different event messages there's some QIDs in there there's lots of different numbers and that, that appear within those uh, if you've got any understanding of uh, something like postfix uh, and there's a lot of other systems as well that do this uh, you can actually pull all this together so a particular process will generate multiple uh, log messages with regards to how it is processed. So in this case, it's an email message accordingly. So we actually have what we would call a transaction uh, that we're actually seeing, and we can use what we call a transaction operator to allow us to group those log messages into a particular uh, set of a, a view and events that we want to process on accordingly. Now, what does that mean? So actually some quite clever things we can do in this one. Actually we've got a defined uh, filter that we've already uh, preset and, and, and 
for this demonstration that we can actually just take a quick look at uh, with regards to this so uh, it is actually uh, available here so we're looking for uh, mail queue transactions and there it is so we select that load and close and let's run that search uh, of what's going on now there should be plenty of data in there uh, and we can see what's going on and hey presto there's there's our events and uh, let me just shuffle out of the way because we don't need it for the moment and more importantly now we can we can start to see that we have this uh, QID this transaction so we can see here the transaction there we're, we're actually just picking out the QID what that means is now we're grouping all of these together into uh, a sequence effectively into the sequence of the events as they occur with this particular matching criteria uh, transaction across these uh, these particular log messages so we can see the order in which these uh, this particular um, ID for the process has been done uh, and what's actually occurring as part of that process. So of course we now actually have a, a sophisticated way of bringing that data together in sequence based on a very simple set of processing of the log data. Now, as a, I, I could actually go in and start doing some, some charting, some investigation, and some drill down on this, this particular process. But the idea is just to illustrate the very simple scenario that we can take a, some log data that's received from a file. Uh, we can process that on the logger system itself without any external processing, feed the data in, and then do a transactional process based on that log data on some simple information to indicate and bring all that data into a single transaction for us to search and investigate on accordingly. So, uh, very simple and very short demonstration, so thank you very much for your time.